Diane Nash. Looking at her from the outside, you see a beautiful woman. But what lies beyond her looks was something much more impressive. Educated, strong-willed, she was a prominent figure in the civil rights movement. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the year 1938, the year she was born. Nineteen thirty-eight. Diane Nash was born in Chicago, Illinois to Leon and Dorothy Nash. Diane grew up with her father serving in World War II and her mother working, so she was taken care of by her grandmother. After World War II had ended in 1945, Leon and Dorothy Nash decided to end their marriage. Her mother later remarried to a man named John Baker. Now I want you to remember this name. John Baker. You see, John Baker was involved in a largely successful African-American labor union called the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. This is the man who could be credited with introducing Diane to the civil rights movement. Let's fast forward a little. After a year of going to college in Washington, D.C., she transferred to a school in Nashville, Tennessee. Let it be known that we are now in the year of 1959. It was there where she saw firsthand the segregation of the South and developed her passion for equality and civil rights. This is where it all began. SNCC Diane was a founding member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the SNCC. This was an important organization. The SNCC participated in sit-ins and freedom rides. They were famously nonviolent yet slowly effective. She was jailed multiple times during her sit-ins. In jail, Diane refused to post bail. This tactic, known as jail without bail, took away some of the financial burden placed on activists. On February 17, 1961, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote to Nash saying, You have inspired all of us by such demonstrative courage and faith. It is good to know that there still remains a creative minority who would rather lose in a cause that will ultimately win than to win in a cause that will ultimately lose. With major, violent, race-based incidents continuing to happen in the South, Nash knew her job was long from over. The Freedom Riders Yep, Diane helped start them too. The Freedom Riders was a group of civil rights activists who traveled on a bus with black people in the front and white people in the back, challenging racial segregation. Although the Freedom Riders were nonviolent, they sparked an angry reaction from the South. The police let angry mobs attack the Freedom Riders before arresting them. After the violent reactions, Diane was firm in her stance to keep on going. She said, it was clear to me that if we allowed the Freedom Ride to stop at that point, just after so much violence had been inflicted, the message would have been sent that all you have to do to stop a non-violent campaign is inflict massive violence. Diane then led the riders on. She went against the hesitation from others who said people could die. She said, we know someone will be killed, but we cannot let violence overcome non-violence. Selma. Historian Anthony R. Cougar says Diane aided the voting rights campaign in Selma in 1965. Indeed, she did. After the church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama that killed four young girls, Diane and other activists set up marches to fight for voting rights in Alabama. 
They were attacked by the police force multiple times. When the nation saw the brutality and injustice that was going on, they were outraged. The marches were a success leading to 1965 Voting Rights Acts, all with the help of one Diane Nash. <laughs>